Hello, and welcome to this episode of The Consumer, where I'm going to talk about Stranger Things Season 4. The main thing I want to touch on is the quality of the season and the quality drop-off on the last two episodes. Maybe not so much quality drop-off, but uh, padding for time. So over Season 4, I'd give the total season an 86. If it wasn't for the last two episodes, it'd probably be a 96. But for now, it's an 86. It loses 10 whole points because of the last two episodes. Uh, I don't really care too much about the masculine and feminine stuff, but uh, I've ranked it all here. One thing that's really good about Stranger Things is it has no woke elements, has the diverse cast, but diverse cast full, fully fits within the world. And they're not doing any like, any like race baiting or girl power shit. It's just kids being kids, like kids were when I was a kid. Uh, none of this uh, bullshit that they force feed into everyone. So uh, episodes one through seven were nearly perfectly paced. The only real problems is the fact that the Stranger Things kids have gotten older and their acting abilities have gotten worse somehow, especially Will. But uh, the pacing and everything about episodes one through seven, I thought were excellent. I mean, sure, there's a little disbelievable stuff about how Hopper went to his poke friend instead of his military friend to try to get out of a Russian prison. But, uh... I guess maybe you can justify that by the fact that he only had a number for them to call. But either way, he could have gone there and Joyce could have gone there and gotten more assistance to get him out. Anywho, that's being nitpicky. I don't really care about that. Uh, season Episodes 1 through 7, perfectly paced, spectacularly excellent. Uh, this is the best season yet. I think the villain, 001... Did a very good job. They did a really good job writing the villain and tying it into Eleven's characterization. Uh, I think Eleven losing her powers was the only option left to them because at the end of season three, she was getting a little too powerful and any problem they run into, she would just fix with their powers. Um, I love how they were able to properly separate each one of the group members into their own task, and those tasks didn't feel like ultra forced. And there was a moment where they're hanging out, they order the pizza to escape from their guards, and it goes from like a Stranger Things movie to a Jason Bourne movie. And the transition was only like a minute, but it changed from like like a POV perspective with shaky cam. I thought it was just really well done. I thought everything about the season was really well done, except for the last two episodes. It feels like, and I'm positive they did it this way, on the last two episodes, they added an extra two to three hours of unnecessary padding. A lot of what was in those final two episodes was long, drawn out, like musical montages over scenery and over dramatic emotional scenes that it didn't really feel had a place and it didn't feel right it just felt awkward and forced and the reason they did that right here on the news stranger things season four becomes the second title to ever cross one billion hours view so they deliberately padded the final two episodes i'm guessing they've reshot a bunch of it they probably had the episodes fully shot and then they came back and they added a bunch of stuff in for padding. I would have to go back and rewatch it, which I don't want to do. Th this flaw will become doubly true upon a second rewatch. You would feel the pacing just fall apart in the final two episodes of it just dragging along. Um, but uh, if I, I could rewatch it and then identify changes in haircuts or age to see if they brought them back in post shoot to get more scenes to fill more content because Netflix is struggling with their financials. If you go to their stock, yeah, so they want to try to bump this up to get back to their, uh, crazy overvalued numbers instead of you know the 184 they want to try to at least get back to the 300s but they're not going to do because they're a shitty business model but uh other than that i thought it was spectacular i really wish they wouldn't have padded the final two episodes uh best season yet i think the episodes one through seven was a masterpiece of uh, television uh Kids too old, somehow it's got work at acting, forced emotions, final two episodes way too long and drawn out. Yeah, uh, I give it a full consume. I uh, just wish they didn't 
pad out the final two episodes to try to get more stream time to try to pad their numbers but you know Netflix is gonna Netflix go consume